Our goal in this video is to look at the graph and find local max and mins and absolute max and mins. Let's start by finding the absolute max and min. The absolute max, the highest point on the graph. So looking at the graph, we can see the highest point is located at the peak of this hill here. That's located at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can think of that as f of 4 equals 5. The local max is 5, and it occurs when x is 4. And then we're looking for the lowest point on this graph. It looks like the lowest point on the graph is here, the absolute min. But notice that that circle is open meaning that we can't actually include that point. So the absolute min of this graph does not exist. Next, we can look for local max and mins. Local maxes, we're going to look for peaks in the graph. So our first peak in the graph is here. We have a hill here, but notice that that is an open circle. We cannot include it. The next hill in the graph we have is here. That's the same as the absolute max. We can still call it a local max because locally or relative to the region around an x value of 4, there is a peak in the graph at 5. Moving along, we have another peak in the graph here. That's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 4. Think of that as f of 6 equals 4. So there is a local max of 4 around an x value of 6. Looking now at local mins, the way our book defines local minimums, the end point will not be included. So even though it looks like there is a lower value here, we're not going to include the end points when lo looking for local maxes and mins. They can be absolute, but not local. So look for another dip in the graph. We have a little dip here that's at 2, 2. So f of 2 is 2. Any more dips in the graph? We have one here that's located at f of 5 equals a value of 3. So there is a local min at 5, the value of the local min is 3. And again, we're not going to include the endpoint down here for two reasons. One, it doesn't fit our definition. We don't include endpoints. And even if we did, it's an open circle. 